in this video we'll concentrate on a very peculiar huge rod tower. Uh, this is clearer if we zoom in about five kilometers from ground level. Um, the rod tower itself is at a distance of about 120 meters from the impact zone of the um, L-Cross uh, missiles that were fired into the KBS crater uh, 2009 and the reason was the so-called investigation of ice deposits so I'll just do a quick measurement again this is from Google Google Moon from there it's about 120 120 kilometers um, it's just interesting why they couldn't land a probe there to take a drilling samples it's very close it's a very close trip um, let's now zoom in this area it's very easy to see this even about 35 kilometers from from the ground level things are opening up which shouldn't be there basically we have a, a very strange pattern that it doesn't look like a, a natural formation so it's obviously a, not a mountain or rock formation or lava flow formation again we have the peculiar common trait of all the uh, structures on the moon that I found which have an excavation we always have square areas or flat areas around the excavation as well from the excavation we'll have a towers emerging which are always very bright some are, are luminous and emit light but th this could be just classified as a, a bright tower the peculiar thing is when we use the ruler to measure this so everything here is easy to put in um, Google Moon we start from the tip we go down to where it comes out of the crater and it's 420 meters now to understand this the World Trade Center was 420 meters high at the actual tip of the roof where people use it as a tourist observation tower that was World Trade Center 2 so this is the same height as the World Trade Center number two before it was knocked down and that's only the the height that we see coming out of the excavation now again these excavations are not round they're squarish rectangular in structure um, they do not look unnatural and again it'll be difficult to see how they could be a man-made uh, to actually uh, build a 107 story structure on the moon you would need a landing strip, roads, access area. You'd see um, mounds of soil where the excavation took place nearby, but it's all been flattened out. And um, if we zoom in, we'll see all the rectangular areas nearby. That's a cross pattern there. This becomes a white. This becomes a line there rectangular figures there and they always seem to lead further down into the crater that's dark so that's a rectangular area zigzag patterns I think they're these are towers on the edge of the crater the common feature again which is seen in these moon structures is towers on the edge of craters the oldest ones are in the Tychos crater they're very barren they look very eroded so again to a discount they're human made uh, we wouldn't see very old uh, barren eroded towers there in the Tychos crater and again they're all down the edge we've got a censorship happening here on the edge of this between the high resolution images and what could be behind on the other line because obviously it's cut through one other tower here and there as well well it hasn't cut through these so we don't care now uh, we see one more similar tower here again we haven't got such a defined square flat area around this one we'll just do a quick measurement so these are all very close to the impact zone of the lacrosse missiles I hope any major damage wasn't done to these uh, natural not a natural but moon structures that were there I assume they're all there prior to man even landing on the moon that's about 400 meters so with these they're about four times the size of the towers of Amari uh, Moscoviense 
and also about four times the highest tower in the Tychos crater system. They become very huge in this area. And again, you'll see all these zigzag patterns. Uh, there's always a excavation near these towers. Um, again, the clearest one was the one I've shown, but I'm just comparing what's close by. We got this ridge here with towers on the ridge happening. We'll just measure one. That's uh, uh, about 350 meters. So these are not small by any means, and I doubt humans could have placed these around a, a rim of an excavation without any roads or landing strips or anything like that. Again, these are comparable with the size of the World Trade Center. Could they be a natural crystalline formations or anything similar on the moon? Again, we have to ask that question rather than jump in and say, look, these are alien constructions or alien uh, buildings on the moon. Um, I'm trying to obviously uh, discount the alien uh, possibility into the equation, but uh, once I see that sort of square flat area around the excavation and I see a large tower which is common throughout all the structures which I've so far documented on the moon and V-shape rows of towers and excavations and um, clearer pictures it just it's highly unlikely to believe they could be just natural crystalline formations that have popped up on the moon and assumed all these very strange square patterns with towers popping out of one edge and um, just a bit harder work that one out so again I don't like to comment they're alien formed but um, there isn't anything here that resembles human structures um, are these structures empty? Have we occupied these structures? I don't know. Um, do aliens still use it as their outpost or colony? Um, those answers I don't know, but I'm just trying to focus in on one. I possibly think how it's formed naturally. The height is huge. They're not talking about small structures. Again, they all have a clear defined pattern which is in all the other high resolution craters as well and here we see a pattern of very um, luminous towers around the edge so it's very hard to pinpoint those as they're all very bright uh, emitting light and that was common with all the other um, towers around the craters they're actually bright these are very luminous and we have a whole system again of towers popping up then we have all these courtyard type flat areas that lead into the excavation and um, yeah so again just trying to work out what's happening are they ours I doubt it are they natural formations that's pretty hard to believe they're natural um, we've just heard the news that a polar caps have been found on uh, mercury so I've always been told that's um, a boiling hot of anything would a, a melt on mercury so we do have chances obviously of alien colonies there as well we haven't got these high resolution pictures so on Mars or Venus uh, are they hiding the same things there do we have all these alien cities on Mars and Venus um, they tell us Venus is about 100 atmospheres and it's about 700 degrees Celsius but when the probe the Russian probe Venera landed on Venus. It, the parachute didn't uh, burn up when it was entering the atmosphere. It probably shouldn't have even uh, needed a parachute. It, it was 100 atmosphere uh, pressure. And it just showed clear landscape pictures of rocks. So uh, we can assume the same could be happening on Venus and Mars. And now we've got one more suspect entering, which is. Uh, um, a mercury on the ice caps that could be also now here we're hiding something we've got a sensor ship coming in here so by trying to show high resolution images we see these large towers that have been censored by 
as though someone purposely wants to come in and cut out these areas, zigzag areas, to hide what's happening really in these other areas. I can't understand why it just can't be a normal square square shot, but it's just been chopped off here where we see these very large towers coming into the picture. Now, what I'll do... Um, oh, and I also have seen on YouTube, just under the Morsons up uh, a base Antarctica there was a very white very large white uh, uh, UFO pictured over that using the cameras on the base they're the same ones that I saw flying over Sydney and they're the same ones that have been pictured over the Mars landscape so it's a very good chance we're actually flying our missions there at the moment it's actually from recovered reversed alien UFOs or we actually designed and have built them ourselves and if you just Google TR3B, you'll see how it's very simple to use anti-gravity and how it could operate. So they're 550 meters. That's more than half a kilometer. That's even taller than the first than the second World Trade Center by 130 meters. So that's about 150 stories high structure. Uh, yeah. So I've seen two groups fly over Sydney, and the a second group that I saw this year had a, a, a red ones as well and they're very similar and also if you google um, Canberra a UFO orb in YouTube you'll see one that's being pictured flying under the plane at very high speed but then I've researched the orbs and they're actually telling us they could be uh, Russian Cosmospheres I don't think the Russians have that good capability um, compared to the Americans. They can uh, build things larger and uh, uh, bigger like obviously the rockets, the boosters, the Antonov which is 620 tons. They can really uh, build things and push limits but I think where it concerns electronics and things like that the, uh, um, the uh, Americans are in the lead with all their um, assets and scientists. I think the Russians obviously only started to catch up after World War Two. They were a, a very poor country. Uh, the king usually had all the assets, and the people were very poor and peasants and uneducated. So it's very hard to catch up that quick. They have uh, uh, done a fantastic j job uh, catching up. Here we see again where it's been cropped. It's something obviously was happening just near the edge of where this was sensitive. You see the very large towers. That's a very large luminous one there, which you actually see like a bright line in the middle. It's a very common white one as well. That's quite tall. So it was censored right at the edge where things are censored. And if you go down here, you'll see all these zigzag structures and one, two, three towers there popping up, uh, right angles, shadows, and you see green as well. So obviously we see the concept of green could stand obviously for uh, vegetation I'm not saying could stand for other things but it always happens when we go closer down into the valleys that's where you would have a condensation that's a nice square structure as well it leads we've got rectangles there that lead into the um, into the cavern and we've got again on the edge of these um, we've got towers that are, are popping up as well I don't see how these could be natural formations and yet there seems to be censorship at work on this edge right here where all these huge towers are popping in. These are the largest that I've actually seen on the moon's uh, base uh, on the moon's surface. As I said, they're about 550 metres tall. So these are gigantic and it seems as though the image was cropped right there where other things are happening as well. On the inside you'll see a, a definite line happening. Um, so things are being hidden but obviously they haven't hidden everything and you can just go down and work out the detail. It's very hard to see anything inside the Cabeus crater, it's always very dark. But that's why I've picked on this area which um, once anything like that pops up from nearly 40 kilometers obviously that would have been seen by uh, Apollo images, the early ones. Things that are looking square and towers 
popping out of them. So obviously they knew quite a few years ago that um, there were unnatural structures there, which did 